Okay, so I still can't edit videos. Sad face. Um, but I wanted to talk, because it's approximately the right time of year, uh, about my works in progress. So, the format of the video is going to be my brief disclaimer about the fact that none of these are promises. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> none of these are promises. I don't, don't hold me to any of the things. I'm talking about my works in progress and I really want you to understand that I have no idea if any of these are ever going to get finished. Sorry. <laughs> like, I only know if a book is finishable when I have finished it. And it's an annoying thing to have, but it is what it is. So the format of the video properly is that, now that that's out of the way, is I'm going to talk about what I consider to be a work in progress. Uh, I'm going to talk about the books that I already have out, or if any are coming soon. And then I'm going to talk about what my works in progress are. It's going to be a little bit different this year, because I've known the things a little bit differently this year, um, but it's basically going to follow the same format as the previous times. So. Uh, what books do I have out? No, what do I consider a work in progress? That's what we start with. So I consider a work in progress. Okay, so I have this thing called a collection point. It's just a notebook, but my collect it's got ribbons on it, which is cool. But my collection point is where I collect all of my book ideas. If I have a vague idea for a book, it goes into the collection point. It gets a really stupid title. It gets a quick premise and I write down any of the places that I have started writing. If a story has more than one scene written, I consider it to be a work in progress. Because for me, if it's only got one scene and it's that like first scene that I thought of, that's not a work in progress. So like, for example, uh, I'm going to talk in a bit about the Icarus story, um, which is a work in progress, but it's also a short story I shared on nopoodles.wordpress.com for free. You can read it now if you like. Um, and the reason that it is now a work in progress where it wouldn't have been last year uh, when I shared the short story is because I have written more than just that short story. That short story was my initial idea and then anything subsequent to that turns it into a work in progress. Does that make sense? Uh, if it doesn't, I can't hear you. So um, <laughs> books that I have out, there are five of them, soon to be six. Probably because I'm not exactly sure when this video is going up, but if it is going up when I think it's going up, five soon to be six. If not, the sixth one is out already. I will, all, it's all on my website. You can find everything you need on my website, but we'll go through them in chronological order by release date. We start off 2021, Mary Ellen Breaking the Curse, the first part of the Guardian Cadet series, which is a like classic fantasy series. You've got your goblins, you've got your elves, you've got your dragonborn, you've got like a magical university, You've got Mary trying to break into the Brotherhood of Guardians. It's never accepted women before. You've got a magical artifact. You've got like secreted heritage. It's a really fun time. Um, <laughs> then in 2023, I brought out, yeah, nothing in 2022. Uh, I brought out its sequel, Mary Allen Finding the Air, which spoilers for Mary Allen Breaking the Curse. Uh, that whole life falling apart thing really, really <laughs> has come back to bite Mary in the ass big time, because now she has to go and find the heir to a title that she didn't want in the first place. Um, it's still a classic fantasy. Uh, <laughs> then also in 2023, I brought out Welcome to Humanity, which was my third book. It's a sci-fi dystopian. And yes, that is a genre shift. Um, I wrote it for my wife. I started writing it in, in the year we got married in 2018 um, for her. And then in 2023, for our five year wedding anniversary and our 10 year anniversary of being together, I published this book for her. I also finally finished it. Um, so it was a very quick turnaround because I finished it and then I was there like, oh my God, how cute would this be to get it out for the five year anniversary? And then I gave it to her and she cried for a really long time. And not because it's it was a sweet gesture, but because it's a devastating book. Uh <laughs> Then in 2023, I also brought out Unlicensed Delivery, uh, which is the first in the Interplanetary Alliance novels, which will be talked about a bit more later. But basically, it's a an intergalactic alliance thing. It's kind of like, I mean, what sci-fi doesn't have that? It's like the Council in Mass Effect or Starfleet in Star Trek, um, that kind of thing. Uh, the first book, Unless It's Delivery, follows Basti, who finally, finally has his cargo ship that he's wanted his whole life to own and run by himself. 
uh, with his husband and it follows them trying to get their deep space travel license which is the license to park cargo intergalactically rather than just inside one galaxy and basically it's like a, a mental acuity kind of test it's like I always <laughs> want to compare it to my wife's CSCS card but nobody knows what that is <laughs> But she had to do, when she was working commercial archaeologist, she had to get a construction health and safety license, basically. And it's that more than it is a driving license. Like, they can already drive. <laughs> but they have to get, like, somebody else compared it to, like, an HGV license. It's like an advanced driving license. I just really wanted to be clear every time I pitched this. These guys are not, like, teenagers. Basti's in his 40s. <laughs> Then we have my books from this year, so we start with Not the Fighting Kind, which is the first in my pirate novels, Not That Kind of Dandy. So Not the Fighting Kind, Nat has been captured by pirates and is to be held for ransom. Nat is a high society dandy liege, uh, or high society liege who is also a dandy, um, and they do not think that their father will pay a ransom to pirates. The second book, Not the Fainting Kind, uh, which is the one I wrote first, comes out on the 17th of September, and I can't say anything about that without it being a huge spoiler for the first book, and since that only came out me a month ago, I'm gonna try not to do that, which is why I had to re-record this video, because <laughs> 30 minutes in, hopefully it won't be 30 minutes, uh, but 30 minutes in, I successfully just out and out said a big giant spoiler and then I was like, ah, oh, nuts, and I had to start over again. There will also be a omnibus collection of Not That Kind of Dandy. That is, I don't want to say in the works because I finished it, like I've written the whole thing, um, but I don't know when it's coming out um, and I've got to do some like formatting shenanigans and make sure that it's reasonable and it's going to be in a hardback and I've never done a hardback before because all my other books are in paperback and ebook forms. Feel free to grab whichever copy suits you best. Um, so this is going to come out, yeah, this is going to come out in hardback hopefully. Um, but obviously I've got to consider things like the cost of printing for hardback. So like say, it's the thing. Imagine for a moment that a paperback book costs five pounds to print the physical copy of it and like maybe like handling costs. Because people who work in the warehouses, they need money. Um, <laughs> so that costs five pounds to make. All of the making of it costs five pounds, right? You could sell it for five pounds, except you couldn't because bookshops want you to have a 55% retail discount. So the recommended retail price that you set for your own books, because we have to do that um, as indie authors, has to be 55% more than that base cost. So rounding numbers very unevenly because I can't edit this video and I did not pre-do the maths. That would be probably £11, right? Except also you, I, I would like to earn some money because I put a lot of work into that. So <laughs> probably more like £12, right? A hardback book has more pieces involved in the making process because you're not just making a leaf of papers that are glued together and then sticking a one single piece of cardboard cover on all the way around it. What you're doing with a hardback book is you're sticking your leaf together, possibly with your fancy hardback protecty edges, um, and then you've got like three pieces of cardboard that have to go inside a case laminate and get like papered to the front as well. So you've got the paper that goes around the outside with the cover on it, and then you've got the paper on the inside that sticks the cover to the leaf of books and on the back as well. Um, and then you've got obviously a dust jacket as well. Um, so all of that costs more to print. So I am having to do a lot of maths at the minute <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of maths at the minute about whether I can make a hardback omnibus collection for a price that is not like, hey, why would I buy this? Um, <laughs> because obviously it has not the faint, not the fighting kind and not the fainting, fainting kind and what is the equivalent of an entire novel's worth of short stories in the back. So it's got three novels in it, but one of them is a collection of short stories and Obviously, I have to look at the price that I'm charging for not the fighting kind and not the fainting kind before I can make any kind of decisions about whether it's a reasonable cost, because obviously a hardback book is more expensive, 
but also if it's too much more expensive it's gonna like pop out of people's willing to pay range um especially when you have the ability to do the maths about the other books and maybe I'm overthinking this <laughs> but those are all the books I have out now we get into works in progress so I have been doing a sticker chart data gathering exercise this year which I picked up from Joy Demora but totally warped it into my own desires uh so Joy Demora is uh, the author of Hunger Pangs Tree Love Bites um and I love that book. I keep talking about it everywhere, all the time. I love it so much. I don't know this person. Um, like I follow her on Tumblr, but I don't actually know her. <laughs> I just really like the book. But um, she was doing a thing, uh, I don't know, she shared a thing on Tumblr about how she gets a sticker for every 500 words that she writes. And I was like, I could do that. And in my pirate year, which is the year that I have two pirate novels coming out, um, and I had finished both of them before the year started, um, I decided this was the perfect time to go on a data gathering mission because I didn't have to hold myself to whatever I wanted to publish next. I could play around in whatever story box I wanted to. So I actually have here in my little planner uh, with all my stickers in it, what I have been working on for this year. So I'm gonna go through that and then tell you what the things are. Um, I may or may not refer to my collection point and I'm sorry if I have long pauses because of that but I can't edit videos still so deal with it um <laughs> no well yes but the first thing I've got on this thing is not that kind of dandy because I'm doing formatting and editing and stuff and that still counts to me in my what am I working up <laughs> what am I working on thing then whew, the next thing I have is interplanetary alliance novels so we have the sequel to unlicensed delivery unlicensed another thing then we have one that is uh, the main character is getting mistaken for a pirate when they're just a, a cargo trader um and the drama that comes from that that only has three people in it so far so <laughs> we'll see where that goes because i thought it was going to be like a bigger crew on the not a pirate ship but it's not uh, <laughs> And if you want like a vibe for that, if you played Mass Effect Andromeda, Reyes is the vibe. Then we have the third Interplanetary Alliance novel I'm working on, which is uh, a shield tech has gone to a, a big, big ship to fix up their shields to be appropriate uh, new update to shields. And uh, things don't go super well uh, because that's life on starships. Um, it's basically the premise of those three. Uh, and then like, I haven't been working on any of the other Interplanetary Alliance novels, but there are more ideas floating around in my brain. Uh, like there's one about pro-mech wrestling, um, which is fun. Uh, there's one about a botanist. <laughs> there's one about exploring a station that got like taken over by the IPA uh, when it appeared to be abandoned. Um, yeah, there's fun stuff. Um, then the next thing on my list is The Icarus. So that is based on the short story that I shared in last year, uh, in September last year on nobody.wordpress.com for free. Feel free to go and read it now if you'd like. Um, but The Icarus is basically um, space pirates. So, oh, it's got a really good pitch. Hang on, let me see if I can find it really quickly for you. Watcha, watcha. The Icarus, haha. -ha. Uh, everybody knows about the Icarus, the fearsome ship that traverses the galaxy preying on weak souls. They're ruthless, reckless, relentless. What they don't know is the captain drinks himself to sleep every night. They don't know the reason that the Icarus is so reckless is that everybody aboard has already lost everything. Zan was supposed to live the life in nameless obscurity, an ergotus to a powerful galactic empire, but when Zan accidentally murders the queen, that is no longer an option. That's all stuff that happens like in that short story. Um, and it was just gonna live life as a short story, but I have a BA in classics, well, classical studies. Uh, so <laughs> I literally studied Greek myths and Greek history and stuff for, for my BA for three years. Um, although technically five years of study for all the whole thing. I've talked about this before. Um, and <laughs> yeah, and I, I, 
I wanted to use it for something, um, so I decided to make it a space fantasy thing. Uh, because, why not? Um, <laughs> then the next thing on my list is Claritry Chronicles. Claritry Chronicles are my urban fantasy thing. I have talked about this and they are now up on my website. Um, but basically it is, uh, Claret Brie is a vampire mob run town. They took over in the 1920s when mobs started running towns. Um, and because they're vampires, they never died. Um, but something's going wrong in Claret Brie and they've reached out to the Hunter's Guild for help. And the Hunter's Guild sends Billy. Partially because they think this might be the thing that finally kills Billy off. And Billy is kind of a thorn in the Hunter's Guild side, but they can't get rid of Billy because Billy is an Arcte and is like magically predestined to be good at hunting monsters. It's a it's a fun thing. I've got better pictures on my website. That's not the best pitch I've done for it. Uh, then I have my Fae Courts Winter King novel that I've also been working on. So that's like all based in like Scottish mythos because I am Scottish if you didn't know. And I know you can't tell by my voice, but I am. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, with <laughs> With that, that's all based in Scottish mythos and like Scottish language and legends and stuff. Uh, it's really exciting, but basically the premise is that Thera has a terrible job, a terrible life, and terrible parents, and then she gets summoned by this really ancient contract to wed the new Winter King because somebody's just killed the Winter King. And this is a companion, it turns out, to the Claribel Chronicles novel. So Claribel Chronicles is just Billy's story, but then we have a couple of different comp companion novels for it, and Fake Thoughts Winter King, which has a proper name, uh, is one of those things. Uh, if you want a little taste of that, you can read I Thought You Loved Me um, on nobunos.wordpress.com that I shared for OC Kiss Week this year, 2024, um, because that has Erden, one of the main characters, as the protagonist of the short story. And then the final thing on the list of things I have been working on this year is something that I really debated whether I was going to tell anyone about. Uh, because, okay, I'm going to reiterate, I know I've already said it, but it's really important for this one, I'm going to reiterate, I am not making any promises here. <laughs> this is not a promise of completion or a promise of publication or anything like that. This is just me telling you what I've been working on. I've been working on the third Guardian Cadet series novel. And the reason I'm couching this in so many disclaimers is because I said I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> and now I am. So the reason I wasn't going to do that was because I didn't have any more Guardian Cadet series energy left. And because Mary was at a point in her life where I was like, I feel like we could just leave her here and we can assume that everything is going to go well from here on out, despite the fact that that's not proven to be the case thus far in her life ever. Um, and then I started working on a Nathaniel Larynx novel instead. And that didn't go anywhere. That turned out to be, it's not trash or anything, but like, I just, it just, I wasn't feeling it. It wasn't working. It's not going to happen. But because I'd opened the door to being inside Larynx's head, this is what happens when I wrote Meeting the Lord. Um, <laughs> But because I'd gone into Larynx's head, I was kind of in there and seeing how he thought. And then this scene idea came to me and I was like, oh, I'll just write this down. And the scene idea in question was Larynx, this is big spoilers for the Guardian Cadet series. Big, 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 big. The scene in question <laughs> was Larynx talking to the two other leaders in the triad. Not that kind of triad. Uh, <laughs> in the power triad. Uh, in the triumvirate. We'll call it triumvirate. Um, so he was talking to the two other leaders in the triumvirate and they were talking about how they needed to go and reaffirm peace with the other peoples in Terria, the world in which Guardian Cadet series is set. And they said, you should go to Cyan, where the goblins live. And Larynx is like, um, are you trying to kill me, actually? Because that sounds like a great way to do it. And that was the first scene that popped into my head. And I was like, this is cute, this is fun, maybe I'll share it as a short story, right? Just for, like, the amusement of the people on my mailing list. And then, 
I kept going and now I have 15,000 words. So <laughs> I did have 20,000 words of the uh, retelling from Larynx's perspective. So don't hold me to anything with that, but I did write 15,000 words of this thing. So, and I'm not finished. Um, <laughs> I still have ideas for it. So currently it appears to be a dual perspective novel with both Mary and Larynx having perspectives because they both go to Scythe. And that's all I'm telling um, because I don't know. I don't know whether this is ever gonna happen or not. I hope it does because I like it. <laughs> I hope other people will also like it. Um, but but I, I guess we'll just have to see because that's just how these things work. Anyway, this is the point at which I am not doing spoilers anymore. So actively what I'm working on is bringing out, not the fainting kind if I haven't yet already because I'm filming this before it comes out. Um, and then I don't know exactly when not that kind of down the omnibus is coming out because I still got to do some more maths and it depends also on what other events I'm doing this year. So I went to MCM Comic Con in May this year in London um, and I've applied for a couple of different events. And like I've had some no's already, which is normal and fine. Um, <laughs> I've had some no's already, so I'm not putting my eggs in any baskets or anything, but if I get into some of the events that I've, if any of the events that I've applied to, that does take time out from doing the writing thing because I have to make sure that I've got all of my like, I don't know if you'd be interested in this, I'm gonna tell you anyway. Uh, I have all of my like uh, maths that I have to do. So I do bundles at these events. So like, I mean, on my uh, signed bookshop, you can get the Guardian Cadet series bundle, which is everything Guardian Cadet series and that's currently 30 quid. Um, and you can you can get that from me in person also. But I also do other things like you can get all of my books in one bundle for a slightly lesser price than you would if you bought them all individually. Um, or you can get like merch add-ons, which you can also get from my signed bookshop. But um, like I do like a fantasy fan bundle and like a sci-fi fan bundle and I might do like a pirate fan bundle, I'm not sure. Um, and all this kind of stuff and I have to do the maths for that every time because somehow I always have a different number of books when I do events so like I did it for Buy Pride in 2023 I did all of this bundles maths and then <laughs> I went to MCM Comic Con in May 2024 and I had to redo all of that maths and that takes a lot of work because there's percentages involved and I'm not great at those but there's also like it's the dyslexia, it's holding all the numbers in my head at the same time and like you may be thinking just write them down Will then you don't have to hold them in your head and it's like yeah but that requires me to actually be able to write the numbers down which is not guaranteed because of the dyslexia um <laughs> so yeah depending on if slash what events I go to for the rest of the year I may have more time to devote to bringing out books, I may have less time to devote to bringing out books, I may have more energy to devote to bringing out books or less energy to, you know, it all very much depends. And there's all of the other life stuff that's happening also. Um, like, pets need jabs, cars need MOTs, stuff, uh, <laughs> life stuff, um, and I don't, yeah, I'm not gonna get too much into life stuff, but, uh, so I don't know exactly when I'm bringing out my next book beyond that, and I don't know exactly what it's gonna be, because you may be thinking, uh, what have you put in the back of Not the Fainting Kind? Or if you come across this video after Not the Fainting Kind is already out, you may be thinking, you've put something in the back of there. I know what it is, it's Clarity Chronicles, for anyone who doesn't know. Um, it's not a spoiler, because it's not relevant, but the reason I picked Clarity Chronicles was because I have actually a full completed draft of that. Like it has an ending um, and I know it's coming out at some point. It's just a question of when, whereas with the other works in progress, it's more of a like if. Um, but I don't know if that is gonna be the next thing I bring out or if I, I'm gonna bring out this Guardian Cadet thing, if I ever finish it, or if I might bring out like the next 
Interplanetary Alliance novel or what I can't tell you when or what I'm going to bring out next it could be Clarity Chronicles it could be Guardian Cadet series it could be uh, the next Interplanetary Alliance book could be something else entirely probably probably won't be something else entirely but it could be <laughs> and I just want it to be really super clear that I I don't know and I'm not trying to be annoying with that this is just the way that I run this business my life um so <laughs> you may be thinking well you said in your works in progress video last year that you were not going to work on your urban fantasy project Clarity Chronicles uh until you had finished other books and yeah I did say that that as it turned out was not accurate it's not like it was a lie. I was trying to convince myself not to do it. But I failed. <laughs> but to be fair, I finished it. So, well, I finished one of them and I've started on the rest of the series. So really, it's not a terrible thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that is, that's my stuff. That's my works in progress. Um, I, I'm really excited to be able to share all of this stuff with the people who are interested in it. Um, I am really excited that I started going to like in-person events and stuff because it gives me the opportunity to, to talk to people in person. Like, this is the most amazing thing. Like, and probably not a huge deal to other people, but for me, it was just the best feeling ever. Somebody came up to me at MCM, looked at my table, and then went, oh, I already have that book. It was the best thing ever. <laughs> and like, I don't think that's gonna get old. <laughs> I think that's gonna feel amazing forever. Like somebody else went home and read my book. My, not the fighting kind is what they read. And it's only just come out and they <laughs> went home and they read it and they went, well, I hope you come in October because I want the next one. And I was like, oh. I hope I come in October, <laughs> but I, I don't know yet because such is life and they don't tell you and applications opening and closing and confirmations and all that jazz. So we'll see. Also, these tables cost money uh, and I don't have loads of that. <laughs> if you would like Will to attend more in-person events, please give them money to afford a table. Um, <laughs> mostly joking <laughs> but yeah so there you have it that's what that's what I have right now um and I will obviously try and keep you all updated as much and as I can whenever I can because that's only fair and reasonable um but if you want to stay up to date with everything super duper up to date with everything you can follow me you can always always check my website everything gets updated there as soon as I have the ability to update it there uh which is basically the thing of like, if I know when it's happening, it's on the website. Uh, the other places are of course my mailing list where you get like early access to stuff. Here on YouTube, I bring out a video every single month, uh, but also I bring out a book trailer for every single book. I have already made my Not the Fainting Kind and Not That Kind of Dandy Omnibus trailers. The Not That Kind of Dandy Omnibus trailer was so much work, but oh, it's so worth it. It's, I think it's great. Um, <laughs> I'm really pleased with it. Um, and like, I, I plan to keep doing these book trailers, uh, but you can also follow me on social media. I'm on Tumblr, I'm on Instagram. I'm technically on Facebook, but I'm mostly on Tumblr and Instagram. Um, and if any of that ever changes, the best place to look is my website, willsoulsbeamacraft.com. And as always, there are links to it, in the description box below because I know nobody can spell salt and breath. Uh, also, if you do actually want to support me in a way that's not like specifically buying books, uh, there is a link to my coffee account there because this channel is not monetized and I would like to be able to afford rent and food and treats for Porthos and Ayla. Porthos is here, by the way, <laughs> in case you're interested. Like if they're like, Porthos and Ayla, they're my dog and my cat. Ayla is not here, she's gone upstairs. Uh, Porthos, however, is under my desk and uh, sleeping like a jellyfish. Um, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say jellyfish? Um, <laughs> what I mean by sleeping like a jellyfish is with his tongue out. Uh, don't ask me why that's jellyfish. It just is. Anyway, I hope you have a great one and I will see you next time. Although, theoretically, if this comes out when I expect it to, the next video will be my trailer for not the fainting kind. But there is a possibility that this will come out after not the fainting kind has come out, in which case that's the wrong way around. And either way, go and watch that <laughs> because I worked really hard on it and I'm definitely getting better at the voices. <laughs> Why do you do your voices yourself? Well, uh, maybe it's because I don't have any money to hire a voice actor and I refuse to use AI for it because a creative person could do that instead and I am, unfortunately for everyone, a creative person. I say that. That's very self-deprecating. Fortunately for myself, I'm a very creative person and I have that thought process of, I could probably do that about too many things. But I'm having a fun time, so it's probably not actually too many things. Anyway, bye.